In this lecture, I will discuss solution to some specific problems from the exercise of the chapter 1 uh, from the textbook of Mechanics of Materials by Vieira and Johnson, 7th edition. <clears throat> I have chosen some problems for reference and I hope after the solution, the students will be able to solve the rest of the problems. The first problem which I have chosen is problem number 1.1 1 .1 from the exercise. The problem states as two solid cylinders, cylindrical rods AB and BC are welded together at point B and loaded as shown. You can see in the diagram at point B to two different cylinders have been welded. Knowing that D1 is 30 mm diameter of the first cylinder, this is D1, the smaller one is 30 mm and D2 diameter of the other cylinder is 50 mm. Find the average normal stress at the mid section of the rod AB and rod BC. So we have to find somewhere at the mid of uh, rod AB the normal stress and then in the mid of rod BC normal stress again. So let us move towards the solution. First we have to section the rod AB uh, to find its its area and the net force at the mid of the rod AB. So let us section rod AB as I have shown here somewhere anywhere because it is a prismatic rod so anywhere we section it the diameter will be same. Before point B there is no other force between A and B so we can section it between uh, and any at any point between A and B. So let me section it. The length is not important for us. To find stress only the cross sectional area is important. So at any point between A and B is point A, force of 60 kN which is given in the numerical problem statement. The point where we have sectioned the, B, the, the rod there will be a reaction force. This is as per the free body diagram. Reaction force let us call it PAB. So we know that according to the laws of statics, the summation of forces in horizontal direction must be equal to zero. So PAB is equal to 60 kilonewtons. Area of AB will be equal to 5 by 4. Diameter of AB which is 30 mm square. So which is, it becomes 706.86 mm square. So stress, normal stress in AB will be PAB, force in AB divided by area of section AB by dividing 60 kN, 16 to 10 power 3 newtons divided by 706.86 millimeters. Newton per millimeter square is actually megapascal. So we can directly get an answer in megapascal which will be 84.88 megapascals. Okay, in part B, we have to section the rod BC. Again, the length is not important for us. So we will section it here and we will just consider this part. Because there is no more force after B, there is no force between point B and C. So we can section it anywhere between B and C. So let me section it for part B, the previous one was part A of the problem. So let me section the rod BC which has been welded at point B. Okay, here is a 60 kN force. Then there are two forces each equal to 125 kN at point B. And here will be a reaction force. Let me call it PBC. In summation of forces in x direction is equal to 0. So 60 minus 125 because the 125 force is opposite to 60 in direction 
again minus 125 and minus pbc 60 for 60 uh, kilonewton is towards the left direction and all of the other forces are in right direction so the signs must be opposite opposite either you call the right direction forces as positive the rest will be negative if the less left direction force is positive the right direction forces will be negative so pbc becomes minus 190 kilonewton minus means the direction which i have indicated is wrong you have to change it this pbc is actually compressive force i have indicated as a tensile force but the negative sign means it is compressive okay so my direction is wrong the zoom direction okay area of bc area of bc is pi by 4 diameter of bc square which is 50 mm the total area becomes 1963.5 millimeter squares so stress will be sigma bc will be pbc divided by area of section bc by dividing 190 kilonewtons divided by 1963.5 millimeter squares becomes minus 96.8 megapascals minus means it is compressive stress the rod bc is under compression which seems to be fine uh, negative sign shows compression It seems to be fine if we look at the original diagram the portion bc is under compression between these two forces of 125 kN each and this point uh, and uh, restriction at point c it was simple now let us move towards problem number 1.7 from exercise of the chapter one okay the problem statement it is each of the four vertical links has an 8 into 36 mm uniform rectangular cross section and each of the four pins has a 16 mm diameter. We can see here, here are uh, four links, two between B and D, link 1 and link 2, similarly two between C and, and G, uh, C and E. So total four links and then four pins, pin B, D, C and E. Each link has this much dimension, 8 mm is thickness and 36 mm is its width. This seems greater dimension, this is definitely 36 mm. And the thickness in the third dimension, this is 8 mm. And each pin has a diameter of 16 mm. Determine the maximum value of the average normal stress in the links connecting point BD and point C. In each of the link, we have to find maximum normal stress. Okay, first we need to know the forces in each link and then we have areas and we can calculate force divided by area, we can calculate stresses. Okay, to calculate uh, forces, we need to draw a free body diagram. Let us draw a free body diagram of this member a b c so i will draw a free body diagram of member a b c member a b c is a straight horizontal member at point a we have an upward force of 20 kN at point B, we have a vertical force, either I identify it as a downward or upward. We can, if it is wrong, we can get a negative value. At point B, there is force FBD and then at point C, there is force FCE. I think FBD is tensile and FCE is compressive. If my uh, assumption is wrong, the negative the values will be negative okay why i am thinking so if we are exerting a force of one uh, of 20 kilonewton upward at point a it will definitely 
pull the link BD upward it will be under tension and it will push the point C downward against E and I think this member CE will be under compression and member BD will be under tension this is what I think you can assume a different one and you can get different uh, you can, we will get same results with different sign okay and this distance is I think it is uh, 0 0.25 meter and 0 0.4 meter okay 0 0.25 meters and 0 0.4 meters let me confirm it once again okay okay now we have to find the unknown forces FBD and FCE first so to find F CE first, let me take moment at point B equal to the summation of moments at point B equal to 0. So, summation of moments at point B is equal to 0. We can write equation of moment. Distance of FCE from point B is 0 0.4 meter. So, 0 0.4 into FCE. Okay, the for CE, FCE will produce counterclockwise moment around point B if I am taking it as positive so the next moment will be uh, which is because of force of 20 kN it will be clockwise and I'm, I will definitely put a negative sign with it because it will be clockwise uh, opposite direction so minus 20 into 0 0.25 is equal to 0 I hope it is clear to everyone because around point B the force of 20 kN is producing a clockwise moment and force FC is producing counterclockwise moment if I am, I am considering uh, counterclockwise moment as positive so then the clockwise will, moment will be negative you can consider the opposite one okay so FCE becomes 12.5 kN the sign is positive it means the assumed direction is correct I assumed it as compressive force and the sign is positive so my assumption is correct it is compressive FC is compressive okay let me move to the next page okay now taking moment a, a, a summation of moment at point C if I take moment at point C equal to 0, the two forces, uh, force FBD and force of 20 kN, they will produce opposite moments. FBD will produce uh, counterclock mo moment, uh, counterclockwise moment around point C and the force of 20 kN will produce a clockwise moment around point C. So we can simply write the moment expression here. FBD into 0 0.4 meter and 20 kN into 0 0.4 plus 0 0.25 it becomes 0 0.65 okay again if I consider counterclockwise moment as positive so 0 0.4 into FBD minus 20 into 0 0.4 plus 0 0.25 is equal to 0 we can find FBD equal to 32.5 kN again sign is positive it means the assumed direction which was tension in this case tension means the force is away from the body compression means force is towards the body so I assumed FBD as tensile force and the sign is positive the uh, sign of the numerical value is positive it means my assumed direction was correct okay FBD is 32.5 kN. Now for part A, we have to find uh, stress in member BD. Now we can see there are two links between B and D. So the force of 32.5 kN will be divided by 2. 
in each uh, member. Again, in order to find normal stress, the member has a hole uh, at both ends. So we have to find net area. There are two holes. If it is a tensile force, so definitely the forces are out, outer, uh, outer wall of the hole and then there is, the holes are stressed up. So we have to find this area because hole is under stress. You have to find this area. To find this area around the hole, again I will draw it here. We have to subtract the diameter of the hole from the total width of the plate. Okay, the width of the plate is known, which is 36 mm and diameter of each hole is 16 mm. So this dimension 36 minus 16. We have to take this one to calculate this width. And then thickness again, thickness is known. Thickness is given as 8 mm. So we have to keep thickness as 8 mm in this direction. So area, net area will be 8 into 36 minus 16. Area, net area of, of rod, uh, of section of uh, member BC, BD is 8 into 36 minus 16, which becomes 160 millimeter square. And the force BD is already known. So sigma BD will be force of BD divided by area of BD, the net area of BD. So 32.5 into 10 power 3 divided by 160 mm. So it comes out to be 101.5. Six megapascals tensile. Definitely because the force is tensile, so stress will be tensile. In part B, we have to find normal stress in member CE. Member CE is under compression. So if a member is at under compression, There's a hole, there are two holes at the ends. The pins are applying, the pins are applying forces at the inner walls of the holes. This member is stressed up between these two lines. The hole is, the whole area is unstressed. So we do not need to subtract the whole area. We simply need this width W and the thickness which is 8 mm 8 into 36 so area net area in member uh, the member CE is equal to 8 into 36 mm which becomes 2 double 8 millimeter square so stress will be force in CE divided by area of CE the force has been calculated earlier which is 12.5 kilonewtons 12.5 into 10 power 3 divided by area of CE is 2 double 8 cross sectional area so it becomes 20, uh, sorry, the, yeah, 21.7 megapascals and we have to write here compression because the force is compressive. Either we have to mention uh, a negative sign here or we have to write compression here. 
because FCE was compressive in nature. Okay, let us move further towards our next problem. The statement is the problem number 1.13. Statement is an aircraft tow bar is positioned by means of a single hydraulic cylinder connected by a 25 mm diameter steel rod to two identical arm and wheel units DEF. You can see here this is an aircraft aircraft wheel. It has been towed with a tow bar. The tow bar uh, has a cylinder here. This one, which has been connected to uh, this bar DEF. This one, which is further connected to the tow bar wheel. Okay. The mass of the entire tow bar is 200 kilogram. Mass of this entire body is 200 kilograms and its center of gravity is located at G. So where it is acting at this point G. For the position shown, determine the normal stress in the rod. We have to determine normal stress in this rod. We know the diameter of this rod. Diameter of the rod is given as 25 mm. So we can find the cross sectional area of this rod. We just need to first find the force in this rod if we know the force and we already know the diameter from where we can calculate area so force divided by area will be the normal stress in this bar so first we have to find normal stress in this bar for this uh, we, we need to draw a free body diagram of this uh, tow bar first let me draw a free body diagram of the tow bar Before that, problem number 1.13. Before that, uh, we have to find weight of the tow bar. Weight is equal to mass, which is 200 kilograms into 9.8, which becomes 1962 newtons. Now I will draw free body diagram of the tow bar. Okay, the tow bar is at I will try to draw a clean diagram. Here's a cylinder and then a piston cylinder mechanism. It is connected to this arm. This arm is further connected to a wheel. Okay, we have disengaged it from the aircraft wheel at point O there is a pin connection so we will draw two forces unknown forces at point A because of the pin ok here is point B there is no force at point B ok at point G there is weight acting downward W distance of G from A is given in the given figure 1150 you can compare it with 1150 millimeter you can compare it with your the diagram in the big this wheel definitely um, receiving a normal force from the ground reaction force R which has a distance of 850 mm the only uh, the on uh, the only unknown r is in, uh, the r is the only unknown we are interested in here because at the end we have to move to this rod we have to draw another free body diagram later okay this how to find r if we take summation of moments at point a equal to 0 these two forces can be omitted from our calculation the summation of moments at point A equal to 0. If I consider counterclockwise moments as positive, there are two forces. Force R, which is 850 mm away from point A, and then it is producing, force R is producing counterclockwise moment around A. That is why I have kept it as positive. 1150 distance with 
weight weight is 1962 kN is equal to 0 another moment which is clockwise for weight w at point g is producing a clockwise moment okay r becomes 2654.5 newtons okay so we have calculated reaction force at the wheel of the tow bar not at the wheel of the aircraft it is wheel of the tow bar now i will draw a free body diagram of the uh, free body diagram of mechanism of the unit pef this arm and wheel unit def this one remember that these are two uh, identical arm wheel units here it has been written here two identical arm wheel units okay i will draw a free body diagram of this portion only def if we disconnect the def from this cylinder we have to put a reaction force of the cylinder on def let me first consider the first cylinder is pushing this member def it is exerting a compressive force on def this is my assumption it may be wrong okay if it is wrong the sign will be negative okay let me draw the member def and then there is a wheel okay we are disengaging it from here from rest of the uh, def points def from rest of the tow bar at point e there is a pin connection which is pinned to the tow bar so i will replace point e the connection at point e with two reaction forces at point e ex and ey this reaction is already known r again we have to we have uh, disengaged this member def at point d from a cylinder let me consider there is a reaction of cylinder f c d this one from point c to point d the cylinder is either pulling or pushing the member def so i have considered it is pushing it okay we know some of the dimensions from the given problem we know that this dimension is 100 mm okay this dimension is 450 mm my drawing is poor this 100 and 2450 are not uh, synchronous not a uh, not as per the ratio but as it is you can understand it i hope okay 100 mm and 450 mm then we know this dimension uh, if we consider it as point c we know that there is a distance of from the given diagram we know that there is a distance of 675 mm between c and e and 500 mm between f and e okay these dimensions are given in the problem you can confirm it again here all of the dimensions are given 675 500 this is 100 and this is 450 all the dimensions are in millimeters okay r is also known in in the previous step it is 2654.5 newtons 
Okay, we have to find this force FCD. There are two other unknowns, EX and EY. To omit these unknowns from our calculations, let us take a, a summation of moment at point E. If we take moment at point E, we can omit forces at point E. Before that, first we need to find this angle. Let me call it angle alpha. At this angle alpha, we, we can find it tan of alpha is equal to, using trigonometry, it is equal to 100 divided by 675 because if you make it as a triangle so 100 divided by 675 the angle becomes 8.4270 degrees now we will take summation of moments at point E equal to 0 if all the counterclockwise moments are positive Writing the moment equation FCD the sine of alpha into 550 millimeters minus R into 500 millimeters is equal to 0. Okay, so FCD is the only no unknown force in this equation FCD becomes 2439.5 newtons and since the value is positive it means our assumed direction is correct I have assumed it is a compressive force so FCD is compressive now we know force in member CD or cylinder CD we also know the diameter of cylinder CD diameter of cylinder CD was given which was 25 mm sorry rod CD it is 25 mm so stress in rod CD will be force in CD divided by area of CD force is 2439.5 newton area is pi by 4 into diameter square force is in newtons uh, area is in millimeter square so Sigma CD will be in megapascals, it will be 4.97 megapascal. Since the force is compressive, the stress will be compressive. Okay. The next problem which I have chosen for this lecture is. Problem one of the from the exercise. Let me tell you. A steel pipe of 400 millimeter outer diameter is fabricated from 10 mm thick plate by welding along a helix that forms an angle of 20 degree with a plane perpendicular to the axis of the pipe. They have taken a sheet of thickness 10 mm and they, they have folded it and made a pipe from it. It is a steel sheet and the pipe is definitely steel. The thickness of the sheet is 10 mm. Uh, after folding, they have welded it at the helix. Okay, the pipe diameter is outer diameter is 400 mm. The wall thickness is 12 10 mm. So inner diameter is definitely 100 minus 2 times thickness. This is radiation. This is thickness. There is thickness, there is thickness, there is inner diameter, D inner is equal to D outer is equal to D inner plus 2 times thickness. So D inner is equal to D outer minus 2 times thickness. Okay, the weld has an angle of 20 degree with the plane, this plane which is perpendicular to the axis of the pipe. Knowing that the Maximum allowable normal and shearing stresses in the directions perpendicular directions normal and tangential to the weld are 60 megapascal and 36 megapascal. Force parallel to the weld, shear force, allowable shear force parallel to the weld is 36 megapascal and 
allowable normal stress means perpendicular to the belt here is here and here is normal allowable normal is 60 mega pascal so normal stress must not exceed 60 mega pascal and shear stress must, must not exceed 36 mega pascal along the weld determine the magnitude of load p uh, of the largest axial force that can be applied to the pipe we have to find this load p okay the plate thickness is 10 mm again we will move towards solution problem 136 Okay, outer diameter of the pipe is 400 mm. So inner diameter will be outer diameter minus 2 times thickness, which is 10 mm. So it becomes 380 mm. So cross sectional area of the, uh, of the pipe will be it is pi by 4 square of outer diameter minus square of inner diameter so after putting the values uh, you may get it as 1252.24 square millimeter ok area of the pipe is known here is force P this is A naught Okay, the area which is perpendicular to the force. Now we have to. Now we know that the weld is at an angle of 20 degree. So it is at an angle of 20 degree with the with the with this area a naught. Okay. We know from the inclined angle uh, for, for, uh, from the from our, from our theory that stresses normal stresses at an inclined plane are sigma is equal to p over a naught into cosine square theta. Since sigma is given is 60 mega pascal maximum. Let us put here. 60 mega pascal area is in millimeter square so stress can be in mega pascal force will be in newtons automatically 1252.24 cosine square 20 degree okay so it comes out to be p comes out to be 832 Point five two into ten power three newtons are eight thirty two point five two kilometer. Okay, then this is based on uh, normal stress. Now we also have maximum allowable shear stress. based on shear stress we know that for inclined planes shear stress is equal to p over n out sin theta plus sin theta so we will put uh, values in it maximum allowable shear stress is 36 mega pascals 36 is equal to p over a naught is known it is 12 1252.24 1252.24 into sine of 20 degrees and for sine of 20 degrees by putting these values we can find P is eight thirty two 
point five two into ten power three newton or we can we write it as P is equal to eight thirty two point five two kilometer. Now we have two values of P. One based on sorry, not eight thirty two, eight thirty two is the previous one. This one is equal to this one becomes one three seven two point three nine into ten power three newton. Eight thirty two was the previous one. Our P will be one three seven two point three nine kilonewton. We have two values of P. This one, one three seven two point three nine kilonewton based on shear stress, and the previous one, eight thirty two point five two kilonewton based on normal stress. So which one we have to choose? Which one is actually the actual allowable value of P? Because in the problem, we have been asked to determine the magnitude of P, magnitude P of the largest axial force. Which one among them is allowable largest? Most of the students get confused. They think this is the largest value. So this is the answer. But no. Look, this weld is safe. under normal stress of 60 mega pascal and shear stress of 36 mega pascal if we put force equal to 832.52 the normal stress will be 60 mega pascal and the shear stress will be less than 36 mega pascal but if we put p equal to 1372.39 kN shear stress will be 36 but normal stress will definitely be more than 60 mega pascal which 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 is not allowable so we have to find, we have to consider the lower value of p to be on the safer side this lower value of p 832 which is safe for both normal stresses and shear stresses so p equal to 832.52 kN is the allowable axial load largest allowable axial load this is largest it is not necessary that the greater value will be the largest allowable value among the loads the smaller value is always the allowable value it is largest allowable value so i hope this is uh, clear these were the four problems which i have chosen from the exercise to be discussed in this lecture if you want to discuss any other problem or if you have any query uh, from this lecture or from any uh, other topic and problem from the chapter number 1 of the book you can send me an email and you can discuss with me uh, in detail so i hope this is enough for today thank you very much